أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولما جاء موسى لميقاتنا وكلمه ربه قال رب أرني أنظر إليك قال لن تراني ولكن انظر إلى الجبل فإن استقر مكانه فسوف تراني فلما تجلى ربه للجبل جعله دكا وخر موسى صعقا فلما أفاق قال سبحانك تبت إليك وأنا أول المؤمنين قال يا موسى إن اصطفيتك على الناس برسالاتي وبكلامي فخذ ما آتيتك وكن من الشاكرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي Allah Azza wa Jal describes this beautiful incident between him and Musa alayhi salam in these two ayat of Surah Al-A'raf. These are ayat number 143 and 144. I just wanted to highlight one thing from these ayat. Musa alayhi salam is unique among the messengers of Allah in that he got to engage in regular and engaging conversation with Allah. وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمَ Allah engaged in lots of conversation back and forth with Allah Azza wa Jal. And uh, you know, Allah would initiate a lot of that conversation and He would engage in, in it, you know, they would have a lot of exchange. This is a beautiful thing between Him and Allah that's special. But you know, He got to speak to Allah so much, but He never got to see Him. And obviously among the human beings, what a great honor up until this point that no messenger has received, that you actually get to speak directly to Allah personally. So the desire came that I just want to see you. So he, he's talked to him for so long, he says, قَالَ رَبِّي أَرِنِي Master, show me, أَنظُرْ إِلَيْكَ I just want to look at you. Musa is told, لَن تَرَانِي You're not going to see me. But why don't you look towards this mountain? And if it stays where it is, فَإِنِ اسْتَقَرَّ مَكَانَهُ فَسَوْفَ تَرَانِي Then you can see me. Then you will see me. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّ رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ When, the ma- when your, his master expressed, manifested some of his glory to the mountain, جَعَلَهُ دَكَّنْ He made it, or, or the, the glory itself made it explode. فَخَرَّ مُوسَى وَخَرَّ مُوسَى سَعِيقًا And Musa fell unconscious. فَلَمَّا أَفَاقَ When he woke up, قَالَ سُبْحَانَكَ تُبْتُ إِلَيْكَ He said, how far above that you are. I, I, I repent, I'm sorry for what I said. إِنِّي أَوَّلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ I'm the first to believe. In other words, this wasn't about I don't believe. But Ya Allah, I know I crossed the line. Now the reason I, I brought this ayah up in these few sessions that we have together in Qur'an Weekly is because Allah has given us certain things that bring us close to Him and then He hasn't given us certain things like we don't get to see Him, right? We don't get to see the angels, we don't get to see Jannah. We get to hear about it, we get to read descriptions on it, but we don't get to see it. And for some people, they say that, you know, I want to believe, but I have certain requirements myself. I will only believe when I see, like I had a student in college one time who said, I'm ready to become Muslim, if I could just see a jinn or something, or you know, if you could just show me something from the unseen. I was like, it's called the unseen for a reason. <laughs> Allah made it the unseen for that reason. It's part of our faith is to believe in what you can't see. You have to reach it through an intellectual process, even through a spiritual process. But it's defined as the unseen. And some say, even though Musa Alayhi had good intention, his intention was, I've been speaking to Allah for so long, I have this longing to, to want to see Him. Other people don't have such a great intention. They say, well, I will be convinced once I see. I'll believe it when I see it. And so Allah told Musa alayhi salam, قَالَ يَا مُوسَىٰ إِنِّي اسْطَفَيْتُكَ عَلَى النَّاسِ Listen, Musa, I have chosen you, singled you out, and gi- chosen you based on your purity over all people. بِرِسَالَاتِ وَبِكَلَامِ I give you my messages, meaning my revelations, and I get to speak to you. And you get to speak to me. I have honored you with my speech. فَخُذْ مَا آتَيْتُكَ Just take what I've given you. وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ And be grateful. Look at what Allah said to him. Take what I've given you and be grateful. You're asking for more than I've given you. I've given you more than anybody else. 
Now imagine this, you know, uh, applied on us. Allah has given us Quran. Allah has given us Quran. And some people say, well, I'm not sure if the Quran is enough for me to really develop my faith. I need something more. And I remind you of the words that Allah reminded Musa alayhi salam of, خُذْ مَا أَتَيْتُكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Grab what I've given you and be grateful. Take a hold of what I've given you. I argue for people who are looking for something more, my argument is they actually haven't grabbed onto the Qur'an yet. Because if you did, if you experienced this book, if you really engage this book, you would know there's nothing more to ask for. SubhanAllah. This is it. This is, oh, how can I ask for more than Allah's word? Which is why in another place in the Qur'an, Allah says, أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ أَنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ يُطْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ Isn't it enough for them that we sent a book down onto them, that it's being read onto them? Isn't it, in, like Allah put it in this way, isn't it enough for them? Because they, they turned to the messenger and they said, show us a miracle, you know? They, they, they said, show us a miracle. And Allah said, no. Isn't it enough that I sent a book? That's in Surah Al-Ankabut, subhanAllah. So this is from the positive and the negative, you know, from the skeptic's perspective, but even from the believer's perspective. If, you're, if you have a weak iman, if you have weak faith, and you're like, how can I strengthen my faith? I tell you, Qur'an is enough. If you have a hard time fighting your temptations, you have a disease in your chest, you have a hard time killing old bad habits, Qur'an is enough. It has healing for what lies in the chest. You haven't given it a chance. You've underestimated the power that it has to change you into something far better than what you are now, to transform you completely. SubhanAllah. So I, you know, I, I remind myself and I remind all of you, that Allah Azza wa has given us something we couldn't ask for more of. And the, we spend our lifetime trying to exhaust ourselves, understanding the meanings of this book and the wisdom and the guidance and the counsel of this book, and it's not going to be exhausted. And I pray that this month, when you get a taste of this book, that taste makes you addicted to want to learn more and more and more and more about the Qur'an, and that addiction that you have to want to heal yourself and better yourself, Last until the last breath you take and I take on this earth. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum everyone. If you benefited from these reminders, please support Quran Weekly by clicking the link below.